when I clap my hands, you're going to keep slapping your face whenever I say, 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 your, 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 nay, nay, nay. Welcome back, everybody. And welcome back to you, Sean. Ah, what was, what was that? Ouch. Don't hurt yourself there, Sean. What is going on? I don't know. You tell me, Sean. Oh, okay. Uh... Uh, getting getting back on track. Uh, our next story features a movie director. What kind of movie director, Sean? Okay, serious, seriously. Uh, Brian Clement uh, is was raised in British Columbia, and he's the director of multiple series of feature-length films, including Meat Market One, Two, and Three, uh, Dark Paradox, and uh, Exhumed. Let's take a look at it. Hi, my name is Brian Clement. I am a uh, low-budget feature film director. I've made seven features and several shorts. Uh, I just moved to Toronto about a year ago, and uh, I've been uh, working on films since uh, about 1999, doing short films before that in, in school. And uh, I've uh, taken some film theory classes, uh, never done practical uh, training. Um, most of my education of film has come through uh, studying independently on my own, reading books, uh, watching documentaries, behind the scenes, features on DVDs, uh, just learning from various techniques and trying to apply them practically um, in real life. Just getting in there, getting in, getting my hands dirty, I think, which is the best way to learn. In 2003, I made a movie called Exhumed, which was one of the first ones I did uh, that I had self-distribution for for a while, and then a company in the U.S. took that one as well and sold the rights to it all over the world. 2005, I worked on a a feature called The Dead Inside. It was a, a science fiction haunted house kind of uh, horror film. Uh, 2006, I was hired by a company called Crypt Keeper Films in uh, Britain, and they asked me to do a sequel to the Meat Market series, which I was a little reluctant to do because I've been trying to get away from zombies for so long. Uh, the horror genre has kind of dogged me, but um, that's fine. I, you know, I go where the work is, and I'm not going to turn down paying work. I'm not an egomaniac, so it's the, usually what I'll do is I'll save all my money for a year and then uh, work that into a, a feature. And then if I make royalties off of that one, if it gets sold to a distributor, uh, foreign distribution deals often will pay fairly handsomely. Um, then once that's sold, then that money can be recycled into another feature. Um, working on the very low budgets I'm talking about, of course. Uh, a lot of the things I have, I've accumulated over the years, going to uh, military surplus stores. Um, a lot of the things I use, uh, I found online. Certain things I've ordered, replicas of certain props. Uh, you know, there's an old uh, German grenade prop from World War II I have I ordered online, and it's, it's perfect. You know, can't tell from a real thing. Um, some things I've had given to me. Most of the things, though, I seek out specifically for projects. I have a terrible time trying to find them and locate them at the last second, and then I'll have this giant, ever-expanding store of uh, costumes and props and try to build stories out of them later on. <laughs> So uh, one thing I'd always recommend is submitting to as many film festivals as possible, especially if you're starting out with short films. Um, I think it's film fests are a great tool to build hype for yourself. They, you can build up a name and say, uh, this film I made played at this festival in this country and this other festival in this other country. Uh, you can use the film festival name and all your advertising materials and say that, uh, well, we did a good job. Obviously, we got into such a film, this, this film festival over here. So it's definitely a useful tool. Yeah, you want me to pace back a little bit and then come in and kind of exactly. in space like that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, certainly directors have to have a lot of, um, I guess, tolerance for uh, different kinds of people um, because you'll wind up dealing with every kind of human being there is on a movie set. Um, people who are really energetic, people who are really obnoxious, people who are really fun and laid back. And uh, you just have to be prepared for that sort of thing. You have to be really diplomatic, I think. That's very, very important because you often have to deal with people who okay. Okay. don't like working with each just other and uh, not lose your cool and not get agitated. Because if you do, then uh, this set can descend into chaos. <laughs> you don't want that. You want things to be very much under control. And you want to make sure everybody's there and having a, having a fun time, not feeling as though it's drudgery, especially if they're not being paid very much. You know, Nisha, uh, I'm part of the uh, broadcast and film class here in Centennial. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Really? You know we're in the same class, right? Oh, yeah. No, no, yeah. No, I knew that. Yeah. I knew that. So you sure. remember me? No, yeah, obviously. You gonna remember me tomorrow? Yeah. You gonna remember me in a week? Yeah. How about a year? Obviously. Okay. Okay, I'm cool. Knock, knock. Who's there? Ah, I knew it. That's not cool. You forgot That's... me. <laughs> For our next story, we'll be taking a look at something many of us fear as we begin growing older. Alzheimer's which is now the number six killer in, in the baby boomers, and over 10 million people have died from it thus far. This story outlines what it takes for a couple, Paul and Aline, to go through their daily day lives after this diagnosis hit them. Let's check it out. Alzheimer's is a disease of the mind and affects the loved ones around us. Paul and Eileen Coburn have been married for 51 years, and after being diagnosed with the Alzheimer's disease just over a year ago, are now finally settling into a life of normality. Alzheimer's is something that you expect a cure for to come along any day, the way the research is. Plus, you think about it, and I have no reason to feel any threat from it. It was unexpected and uh, disconcerting in many ways. I think it probably was a bump in the road before the diagnosis because things were happening and uh, neither of us were understanding and it caused fights between us. I had suspected for a long time, so it wasn't shocking to me, but it was upsetting because it's not a very nice diagnosis. Not for Paul. He's on a medication that they have, they have tremendous medications now, and the medication that he's been given keeps him at the same cognitive and memory levels that he was at when he was first diagnosed. So hopefully this medication will keep working on him. The type of Alzheimer's I have is very, very basic. It's not a strong case for it, and I don't notice Alzheimer's as a problem. There are times I wonder, like really, what do I have Alzheimer's? because the rest of the days go by normal. Your relationship changes a little bit because it's an emotional disease. It's a very difficult diagnosis to receive. It's very upsetting for Paul to get a diagnosis like Alzheimer's. The decision making is left to the caregiver. Because I'm a caregiver, I make more decisions now in our marriage than, than I used to. And a lot of decisions that he made for years and years, I now make them. Our life has changed quite a bit. I go to a social group once a week. We play a tabletop shuffleboard, and on the other side is a mental exercise. Like they were doing one the other day of naming movie stars in westerns. Like, who is the sheriff in High Noon type of thing? When you mention western, I just perk right up. I know all of the westerns. No, but once we both knew that Paul had Alzheimer's, and there was a a period of adjustment that seemed quite difficult. But now it's been close to a year since he's had the diagnosis. And I think our life has settled. We both feel at this particular point in our life today that things are working out really well and things are going well for us. And I think we're both dealing with everything much better than we were a year ago, much better. I think it, it's a big adjustment, but it's good now.